In this video, I'll be looking at the gradient and rate of change. So this should be mainly revision for you. It's just going over what is a gradient, so and what is so like rate of change, and then so like leading you on to differentiation, which is ability to allow you to calculate the gradient and a gradient function from another function. So being what is a gradient and rate of change? Well, it's a rate of change of one variable with regards to another. So probably one of the most common examples is speed. If we have, let's say, 60 kilometers an hour, this is a rate of change because you have kilometers per hour. So it's a quantity to, with regards to another quantity. And another quite a common quantity to put in with regards to is regards to time. Another one could be, let's say, if you are a mechanic, you could charge $30 an hour. So that means there's a dollar amount. So that's the quantity there, the amount of dollars compared to a number of time. Well, what about if you have a water bottle which is leaking? You could say that it's leaking two liters a minute. So once again, this is a like gradient where you've got a rate of change. We've got liters, so amount of liquid um, with regards to quantity, so liquid liters. And then you've got it once again with regards to time, but this time with minutes. However, with the other ones, there were hours. You can easily convert between hours and minutes. So these are constant rates at the moment. If I said a mechanic charges $30 an hour, that is a constant rate. It means that if he does three hours work, at each of those hours, it's $30. Or if you're traveling at exactly 60 kilometers an hour, then that means no matter what time, you're going to be traveling at this exact amount, and or two liters a minute, if it flows through at different times, like rapid and then slow, rapid, slow, then that's not going to be constant. But if it's a smooth, like a tap running through uh, with water, then it's going to be constant. So these are all constant rates. So examples of ones that couldn't, maybe not constant, is if the mechanic, let's say, charged $50 for the first hour, and then after the first hour charged 40 for the second, and then maybe 30 for all the others, or if you're in a car and maybe you're going 50 kilometers an hour, but then you may change to 60 kilometers, go up to 70, and then go back down to 60, for example. So these are more variable rates of change. So there's sort of two main types of rates of change that you have to calculate. So there's going to be average rates of change, average rates of change, and instantaneous rates of change. Now you'll mainly be dealing with instantaneous rates of change once you've done differentiation because when you differentiate something at a given point you are finding the instantaneous rate of change. So typically they may not even state in a question like find the instantaneous rate of change, they may just find find the gradient at this particular point. But the instantaneous rate of change is what they mean. However, if they do ask they want the average rate of change, then this is calculated a bit differently. So how do we calculate this? Well, let's say we have two points in a given time. So let's say you're driving along the road and at point one we'll say you're going 50 kilometers an hour. And then at point two you're going 70 kilometers an hour. Then over this time span we'll say you've traveled, it's been 10 seconds. So you want to know what is your average rate of change. Well what you do is you go to the point two minus the point one so that's just the first point and the second, um, the second point, and then minus the first point over the amount of time, or if you're doing another variable, the amount of variable divided by. So time is the, probably the most typical one that you mainly encounter. So you have 70 minus 50 divided by 10. So therefore, you have an average rate of change of two kilometers per second which is actually quite a quick change. So you have two kilometers per second, and that's like your average rate of change. If that was a um, graphing, you can still do the exact same thing. So let's say you have a graph, and then you want to find the average rate of change between two points. So let's say that. You want to find the average rate of change between that point and that point. Well, then you have the x value there. Let's say there was a change of x of 5. There was a change of y of uh, 2.5. Therefore, we have this of 0.2 and 0.1. Then it would be 
0.2 minus 0.1 is 2.5, so it'd be 2.5 on 5, which would give us 1 on 2. So 0 0.5 average rate of change. It could be a negative rate of change. If the graph looked like that and you wanted to find between there and there, you could have, for example, an average rate of change of a negative number. If, for example, you're going down for the y, or if it was kilometers, you're reducing your speed, or if it's pay, you're reducing your pay. And then with the instantaneous rate of change the other way, we'll talk about that more later once we use differentiation. So differentiation can allow you to calculate a gradient function from another function. So it means that when you have a function here, so let's say fx is equal to 4x plus 3, then you can use differentiation to work out another function which will tell you the gradient at different points in time. Or well, let's say 4x squared plus 3, you can use that. So we'll look at this about how you can find the gradient functions without using differentiation first and then once you can calculate it will become a lot easier and you'll see what you've done. So here we have y is equal to modulus x. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, here you have y is equal to 5. So we'll start off with a straight line which is completely flat. Well what is the rate of change here? So let's say between here and here what's the rate of change? Well the rate of change is 0 because the y value is constant. The whole rate of change is how much does one variable change with regards to another. And now if the first variable doesn't change, well, there's no change at all then. And you can see that there's no change anywhere along the line. So therefore, the um, gradient is just going to be here, where y is equal to 0. So that will be the equation of the gradient, as the gradient at every point is 0. And that's a constant gradient. So what about now if we look at a straight line, but it's not completely horizontal. So if we look at this line, we have y equals 5x plus 2. So you should know that y is equal to mx plus c is a general form of a line, where m is equal to the gradient. We should think about that as, why is this the case? Well, when x increases by 1, y increases by 5. And that's because you have 5 times x. Now, the plus 2 you don't have to worry about, because at every point it's plus 2. So between these two and these points, we have a gradient here of 5. So m is equal to 5. And everywhere along here, you have the exact same gradient. So that's what the straight line is. It's a line, it's a function with a constant gradient. So that means we're now going to have a constant gradient up here. So it's not going to be 0, but we're going to have a constant gradient of y is equal to 5. So now let's look at a quadratic. So we have y is equal to x squared. So this one's a bit more complicated than the other two examples we just looked at. So let's look at one point that we know. So this point here, well, the gradient there is 0. So m is equal to 0. As you can see, it's a straight, horizontal, flat line at x is equal to 0. So at x is equal to 0, m is equal to 0. Then what happens as x increases? Well, the gradient starts to increase, because you can see it gets steeper. So m starts to increase and it's positive as x goes along. So as x goes along, m is increasing and it's positive. What happens when we go here then? Well, the gradient's actually negative here, so it starts to get negative. And then as it goes along, m gets uh, more negative. So m decreases, or we can think that the magnitude of m increases. So we can sub this point in, so this will be the gradient graph. Then we have here, we have the point 0, 0, because gradient is 0 at x is equal to 0. Then at the top, we have a line like this, because as x is getting greater, the gradient is getting steeper. Obviously, uh, a bit Obviously, the y is equal to x squared could have a steeper gradient, or because this is than this gradient, because this is relating to um, the whatever y value it is relates to the gradient. So it's not about the actual gradient of the gradient function. It relates to the y value being the gradient and the x value corresponding to this x value here. So we have that value there. So m is increasing and that's why the gradient is increasing. Because if you remember before, when the gradient is constant, we just had a constant line. However, as we are now increasing, we're going to have an increasing gradient as x increases. So on the other end, we're going to have the exact same thing. As you can see, the gradients correspond, but 
instead of being positive, it's negative when x becomes negative. So I have there. So from a quadratic, we find that the gradient actually is a straight line. You don't have to worry about what the equation is yet, but you will once you can uh, differentiate this. So this is a quick thing about when can you differentiate. Well, you can differentiate at any given point if it satisfies 1. It's continuous, and 2 is not a sharp point. So what do I mean by is continuous? So if you see this graph here, you can see that it's broken up. And even though at every point there's um, the domain is all, all x real numbers, this is not continuous. At this exact point, as you can see here, the graphs, the equations don't match up. Even though one's a closed circle, that doesn't mean it's continuous. So this, at whatever point it is, so let's say x is equal to 2, is not continuous, so you can't differentiate, you can't find the derivative when x is equal to 2. At all other points, though, you can. So you have to be careful of that when, especially with hybrid functions, because that's typically when they can break up and you can't differentiate at those points. So when you're just running a hybrid function, and let's say you write an equation x is greater or equal to, let's say, 3, x has to be less than 3, and it's not continuous, it can be continuous, but if you checked and it's not continuous, then when you calculate the gradient, um, gradient function, you have to do that, that, and then x is greater than 3, and x is less than 3. So you no longer have that equals, because you can't differentiate at that specific value if, so as I emphasize here, if you've graphed it and it's not continuous, because sometimes you can have a hybrid function which is continuous. You just need to graph it. So what's this other one here, the sharp point? So what this sharp point is talking about is basically the modulus function. Typically, you only encounter this type of sharp point. Um, in this course, all other points will typically be smooth. So this point here is a called like sharp point. So you can see it's quite a sudden change. It's at the point where the modulus function switches, and you can't differentiate there. So there is uh, f the differentiation doesn't um, exist at x is equal to 0.